Sahelanthropus is one of the oldest known species in the human family tree. This species lived sometime between seven and six million years ago in West Central Africa. Although we have only cranial material from Sahelanthropus, studies so far show this species had a combination of ape-like and human-like features. Ape-like features included a small brain, even slightly smaller than a chimpanzee's, sloping face, very prominent brow ridges, and elongated skull. Human-like features included small canine teeth, a short middle part of the face, and a spinal cord opening underneath the skull instead of towards the back as seen in non-bipedal apes. Artipithecus was first reported in 1994. In 2009, scientists announced a partial skeleton, nicknamed Artie. The foot bones in this skeleton indicate a divergent large toe combined with a rigid foot. The pelvis, reconstructed from a crushed specimen, is said to show adaptations that combine tree climbing and bipedal activity. The discoverers argue that the Ardi skeleton reflects a human African ape common ancestor that was not chimpanzee-like. A good sample of canine teeth of this species indicates very little difference in size between males and females in this species. The genus contains two known species, R. Ramidus and R. Kadaba. Australopithecus. Science once believed that this species was, in fact, a close ancestor of humans. However, this classification was questioned after the discovery of older Australopithecus fossils with characteristics very similar to members of the Homo genus. As characterized by the fossil evidence, members of Australopithecus bore a combination of human-like and ape-like traits. They were similar to modern humans in that they were bipedal, that is, they walked on two legs. But, like apes, they had small brains. Their canine teeth were smaller than those found in apes, and their cheek teeth were larger than those of modern humans. Australopithecines were bipedal beings of short stature. They did not exceed 1.4 meters. They lived in tropical regions of Africa, feeding on fruits and leaves, and were the first group to use an opposable thumb to grasp and handle tools. Since the discovery of the Taung specimen, many hundreds of specimens from roughly eight species of Australopithecus have been discovered in South Africa. Homo habilis A team led by scientists Lewis and Mary Leakey uncovered the fossilized remains of a unique early human between 1960 and 1963 at Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania. Some scientists declared these fossils a new species and called them Homo habilis, meaning handyman, because they suspected that it was this slightly larger-brained early human that made the thousands of stone tools also found at Olduvai Gorge. This species lived on Earth between approximately 2.4 and 1.6 million years ago. Physically, it is the most different member of the Homo genus compared to modern humans. Homo erectus. Early African Homo erectus fossils are the oldest known early humans to have possessed modern human-like body proportions with relatively elongated legs and shorter arms compared to the size of the torso. These features are considered adaptations to a life lived on the ground, indicating the loss of earlier tree climbing adaptations, with the ability to walk and possibly run long distances. Compared with earlier fossil humans, note the expanded brain case relative to the size of the face. Homo erectus is considered a highly variable species spread over two continents, it's not certain whether it reached Europe, and possibly the longest lived early human species, about nine times as long as our own species, Homo sapiens, has been around. Homo floresiensis remains of one of the most recently discovered early human species. The fossils of H. floresiensis date to between about 100,000 and 60,000 years ago, and stone tools made by this species date to between about 190,000 and 50,000 years old. Homo floresiensis individuals stood approximately three feet six inches tall, had tiny brains, large teeth for their small size, shrugged forward shoulders, no chins, receding foreheads, and relatively large feet due to their short legs. Despite their small body and brain size, H. floresiensis made and used stone tools, hunted small elephants and large rodents, coped with predators such as giant Komodo dragons, Homo neanderthalensis, Neanderthals are our closest extinct human relative. Some defining features of their skulls include the large middle part of the face, angled cheekbones, and a huge nose for humidifying and warming cold, dry air. 
Their bodies were shorter and stockier than ours, another adaptation to living in cold environments. But their brains were just as large as ours and often larger, proportional to their brawnier bodies. Neanderthals made and used a diverse set of sophisticated tools, controlled fire, lived in shelters, made and wore clothing, were skilled hunters of large animals, and also ate plant foods, and occasionally made symbolic or ornamental objects. There is evidence that Neanderthals deliberately buried their dead and occasionally even marked their graves with offerings such as flowers. No other primates, and no earlier human species, had ever practiced this sophisticated and symbolic behavior, Homo sapiens. The species that you and all other living human beings on this planet belong to is Homo sapiens. During a time of dramatic climate change, 300,000 years ago, Homo sapiens evolved in Africa. Like other early humans that were living at this time, they gathered and hunted food and evolved behaviors that helped them respond to the challenges of survival in unstable environments. Anatomically, modern humans can generally be characterized by the lighter build of their skeletons compared to earlier humans. Modern humans have very large brains, which vary in size from population to population. Housing this big brain involved the reorganization of the skull into what is thought of as modern. Modern human faces also show much less, if any, of the heavy brow ridges and prognathism of other early humans. Our jaws are also less heavily developed, with smaller teeth. Scientists sometimes use the term anatomically modern Homo sapiens to refer to members of our own species who lived during prehistoric times. And so we continue uncovering the origins of humanity, one step at a time toward our own history.